Would you? Would you look at that? Would you? Would you look at that? Would you get a load of this guy? Get a load of this. Look at this. Get a load of this guy over here. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, everybody. How you doing? How you doing, Will? What's up, everybody? I'm doing good. Bob, how are you? How are you? How are you on this wonderful Amazon Prime Day? I'm good. I forgot I needed to change something on my camera. And now I'm definitely good now. All uh, right. Except my, there we go. except my cam link got screwed up. And the notifications are wrong. Did you know Baby. Baby. Hey, why is everything a problem right now, Will? I don't know. Uh, all right, now we're good. Now I'm in a crisp 60 frames per second. How you doing? <laughs> we got a lot to talk about today on the docket. Uh, for the main topic of the day is uh, Sonic uh, got a big old anniversary going on. It's a certain certain somebody's birthday. <laughs> Ooh, 30. I thought he was older than 30. No, oh, he, he is 30 years old. Wow, that just means we're old. Yeah. Uh, yo, Kikoba, thank you for the 19 months. 19 months, baby. Did you know 19 spelled backwards is ni ten nin? No. I do now. And I don't think I'll ever remember that little bit of information. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yes, we want to talk about Sonic because uh, we have a long history with Sonic here at the Wolf Den. Yeah. We, uh, we, uh, we, we like the man. We grew up with the yes. man. We were, we we've were, been there. We were Sonic since... stands. We were OG. We've been there, I guess you could say, since the beginning. Yes. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, since since well, since he really got going, since the important stuff happened. Right. I mean, because the first game came out and we had to like, it was a solid year of convincing our parents to get us a Sega Genesis after that. I'd, so, so growing up, so, uh, you know, I, Will has a better memory than I have it. But oh, before we get into that, so, Sonic's birthday is tomorrow as of this recording, right? Yes. Yes. So uh, what is happening tomorrow? Uh, there is a concert with a, a, a legitimate orchestra. Okay. Uh, it, it's like a it's like a fancy. I gotta look up the. I believe Crush Forty is playing. Crush Forty will be there. Yes. Uh, it wouldn't be a concert without them. That they, they, they no. are. They, they, when I think of Sonic music, they're the first thing that comes to mind. Even though they only yes. really, I mean. They, they came in a little late in the Sonic uh, uh, life cycle. <laughs> well, yes and no, because the guitar player of Crush 40, uh, June Tsunome, was uh, the composer on Sonic 3. He took over for Michael Jackson. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah. That is very... So that is, okay. he, has, he has a long history okay. himself with Sonic. Uh, everyone else... You know, just hanging out with them. They joined during um, the Sonic Adventure era. If you go to Sonic's Twitter right now, the balloons come up. <laughs> <laughs> wait, but it's nice. tomorrow. Oh, wait. You know it's what? Tomorrow, yeah. My computer sucks, and uh, for whatever reason, the the time is always like five hours ahead. So right now, yeah, you can change that, right? And then it changes back every time, Will, because guess what? It's a Windows computer, and there's always something. Yeah, sounds so, right. So that's why it says today's their birthday. I think. So, uh, tomorrow, so oh, here we go. Tomorrow. Oh, wrong thing. Tomorrow's is Sonic's 30th anniversary. Here's to 30 years of amazing adventures, journey across planets and zones, and all the wonderful friends. Okay, what? Here it is. Less than 24 hours until Sonic's 30th anniversary symphony. We can't wait to share some of your favorite Sonic tracks. Oh, that doesn't say anything. For those asking, this event will be at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. You can watch it here and here. Um, and then why is this? Am I? Can I? Can I? I'm afraid to expand this picture. This man looks naked. He's not. <laughs> Me and the boys pulling up to Sonic's Symphony. Why is he? Why is he? 
why is this? <laughs> why is this picture like this? Why is it the first thing that comes up? <laughs> So uh, there were a bunch of announcements for Sonic's 30th anniversary, but they happened already. They happened. Uh, yeah. Uh, the new Sonic game, tentatively known as Sonic Rangers, uh, the Sonic Origins collection, uh, Sonic Colors Remastered, um, a whole bunch of other stuff. That was announced already as part of Sonic's overall uh, 30th anniversary celebration. The, uh, the symphony that's happening tomorrow is to commemorate the actual date. Right. Uh, so I wouldn't expect any special announcements going on. Mm -hmm. uh, last time they did one of these concerts, it was I think it was South by Southwest. And it, uh, I mean, the last like two times they did one of these concerts, uh, it was awkward as hell. Yeah. Uh, and it, 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 there, there was a lot of uh, a lot of good memes came out of it. So yeah. uh, you can expect this one to probably be uh, produced very poorly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But but so uh, the moral of the story, Sega is not really doing that much for Sonic's 30th anniversary. Um, right. We got the announcements already and it's nothing too crazy. So, uh, I mean, we're getting a game like next year. Yeah. So uh, I we're getting wouldn't... we're getting a, a remaster of Sonic Colors. We're getting the Origins Collection, which is also next year, apparently. Right. Um. So today we just wanted to talk about uh we wanted to commemorate Sonic in our own way. Yes. We are getting though and people keep bringing this up to me on Twitter. Uh Minecraft DLC. Oh yes. This Sonic. was announced today. That, it was announced in the the Sonic Direct, whatever they call it, but it's available now. Oh, it was announced at Sonic's little announcement. Yeah, it was like hey, they showed like a they showed a Minecraft screen and then they showed like Sonic looking into it. That was it. Yeah, it was. It was obvious there was going to be a Sonic Minecraft thing, but they didn't elaborate. But now we have elaboration. I'm gonna be real. It looks freaking sick. It looks. It looks ridiculous. The amount it does of work look kind of cool. Into this. Yeah, I noticed in the trailer they used. The three levels that were instantly recognizable were Green Hill Zone, Chemical Plant Zone, and Sky Sanctuary, uh, which were all the first three levels of Sonic Generations, just, just FYI. Um, okay. So it definitely feels like uh, this is a love letter to Sonic overall. And it, like anyone who's ever been a fan of the series will definitely want to check this out. Right. Uh, I mean, yeah, and you have all of the characters too. You have Sonic, you have yep, Shadow, you have all Amy, the characters. You have Knuckles. Uh, you have Tails. Do you have Rouge? Oh, Super Sonic. Uh, you have Chows. You have Super a lot Sonic. of different yeah, types uh, of enemies. Apparently, the Chow Garden. The Chow Garden is included in this. Yo, you get there's like a garage. You have the tornado, yeah. and you have you have freaking Shadow's motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> and Robotnik's there. Uh, this looks freaking ridiculous. I can't. I can't believe they yeah. did. It. They did. It. It, 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 honestly, it looks like a fan mod times ten. Yeah. They 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 did a really good job here. Uh, from what it looks like, uh, it, it's available now. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh. Looks like Sonic punched everyone into Minecraft. I definitely do not like the way that uh, the Sega, the Sonic Twitter uh, announced it. I'll tell you what. <laughs> they said, uh, it's Sonic's turn to be yeeted into Minecraft. Yes. Yes. Yes, that is what they said, Will. Um... Well, I mean, it's not wrong. He's it's being not. yeeted into Minecraft. He is. It's uh, it's it's the type of hello fellow kids that you would expect from this podcast, but not so much <laughs> you would expect from the official Sonic Twitter account. Once the hippest Twitter account in all of gaming. True. Um. So anyway, uh, well, we uh, so as we said before, we grew up with Sonic. Yes. You have a better memory than I do. We started off with an NES and a Game Boy. 
Correct. I don't know um, which one came first or when they even appeared in our in our house. They they were just always there. They were just always there. It's, right. it's how that's the history I choose to live. Um, <laughs> but you know, we had a, an NES. We had a Game Gear. We had a Game Boy. And then 1991, when Sonic came out, uh, we caught on to that hype machine real hard. And mm -hmm. we knew that Sonic was only on Genesis. We knew that Genesis was better than NES technologically. Uh, so we really wanted that more than anything. And our parents said no. Because <laughs> of course they did. They yeah. said no. But... The next year, 92, after Sonic 2 came out, that's when we got our Genesis for Christmas. Right. Sonic 2. Before that, though, our mother was convinced that a Game Gear would be better. So we got a Game Gear with Sonic 2 uh, before we had our Genesis. I didn't know that. I didn't know the Game Gear came first. Game Gear came first. Because she didn't want us using her TV, I guess. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um we we chose a Sega Genesis over a Super Nintendo because uh, yes, I, I uh, we weren't we weren't allowed to get more than one. Yeah, uh, that, you know, early '90s that was unheard of. Even though we did somehow get a Game Gear out of, out of this, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was that was a little generous. Um, but yeah, we 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 chose the Genesis over the Super Nintendo. I guess because of the we we bought into the marketing. Yeah, because the Genesis 100%. was the hip, cool, 100%. badass yeah. uh, d device, and the SNES was for little babies, little pussy, yeah. baby boys. And we weren't that well. We were rugged, no, rough we were, and we tumble, were big, tough, manly men, kids. even in kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we got the Genesis. So, we, and we that, we for for a long time, we it, it felt like most of our childhood was 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 attached to the genesis uh, oh yeah the, the, we got the n64 late in his life cycle didn't we no we didn't yeah we we, we got it like i want to say midway through because i because well, a lot a lot of our friends already had it for like a while okay before we got it i remember we only we didn't have any games when we got it yeah we got it and then we rented uh mortal Kombat All trilogy yeah <laughs> um so uh yeah we were we 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 were it, it's 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 interesting because uh, this is mo mostly become like a nintendo channel and stuff even though there was a long period of our lives where we were we were uh pro sonic and and uh yeah i wouldn't say against mario but if i in no. that era if you told me to pin the two against each other i would say sonic is better because sonic oh yeah is badass yeah no absolutely i've you know we didn't have like we didn't have a super nintendo we didn't even know anybody who had a super nintendo to be honest so most of our childhood was spent around sonic the hedgehog and the sega genesis and they did everything to make sure that sonic was in our lives because they had three saturday morning cart no sorry one cartoon that ran uh, weekdays the saturday morning cartoon which ran at the same time but was it in a different continuity they had a, a long running ongoing comic from archie they had all this other memorabilia and media blitz nintendo really didn't do anything like that they had the the mario cartoon but it wasn't like on the same level as the sonic cartoon was right uh yeah i i i guess there was probably a little bit more in 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 Japan, like they had the the Mario manga and stuff. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, they definitely didn't go as hard as Sonic did. I I, I guess I guess they saw the merchandising possibilities in America, and I I guess Sega knew like, uh, the only way to defeat Nintendo is to make this character look badass to kids. And honestly, yeah. still the best part of Sonic is the character design. So like, yeah, putting him in, on merchandise and stuff was probably the best idea they had. We had we had freaking stuffed animals and stuff. Um, we still do. We one of them's here and one of them's at our parents' house. I saw your daughter playing with one the other day. My daughter loves that thing. <laughs> Speaking of which, like 
this little guy, I got this from my wife like years ago because she actually she also grew up with the Genesis and played Sonic. Uh, but this is now my daughter's favorite bath toy. <laughs> oh. That, I should it, also note, this is uh, from the Jazzwares line of Sonic toys. Jazzwares doesn't make Sonic toys anymore. This is like a hundred something dollars on eBay. Oh my God. Get that away from your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> is that uh Sonic Mania specific? It looks like, uh, a, it looks like classic no, Sonic. I think it's, Sonic uh, it's Generations. Oh, same, same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. S- what was I gonna say? Some something about uh something about uh oh we started S- Sonic on Sonic Two. Yes. We 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 never we never played the first one growing up. Well, uh, we, uh, you know, eventually we would play the first one. Uh um, the problem is though, like we started so much farther ahead sonic 2 is such a much better game than the first one yeah sonic 1 like, is not, not even great. close yeah sonic 1 is not good um yeah so i think that's why we like sonic a lot because sonic 2 yeah. <laughs> starting on sonic a 2 one. if i if i yeah. played sonic 1 i might be like eh that that nes is looking pretty good right now <laughs> i mean I, to be fair modern a lot of modern versions of sonic 1 add the spin dash and that changes the game. It makes it a lot better. But overall, it's not as good as Sonic 2 still. Uh, we have a... I mean, we have a longer history with Mario. Because... Yeah. Oh, well, we, Mario's been around longer. Yeah. Uh, we just yeah. kind of abandoned Mario for a few years. Yeah. <laughs> but Between Super Mario 3 and uh, Mario 64, uh, we had no... Yeah. No... Uh, no, nothing with yeah, Mario. We, we only had Mario 1 and Mario 3, and then nothing yeah. until Mario 64 in, in our lives. I didn't play Super Mario World, like, in earnest until college. <laughs> yeah, I didn't play it until uh, until emulators uh, existed. Yeah. Um, so, or, or we would go to Sears, and I would play it on, on the little yeah. uh, on, on the kiosk. On the kiosk. Uh, but in that time period where we had a Mario drought in our own lives, we, uh, we had Sonic... Two Sonic mm-hmm. Three Sonic and Knuckles. We had uh, Sonic Spinball. We had yes. Sonic 3D Blast. Yes. Uh, we had uh, Sonic we... Chaos. We had Sonic. Uh, yes. Sonic Two Sonic for the for the Game Gear. Game Gear. Um, I believe that's it. But that's yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. And not to mention, you can take Sonic and Knuckles and put it on a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. You so can we, connect it to Sonic 2 to play with Knuckles in Sonic 2, or you can connect it to Sonic 3 to get the full game. So we were we were all in on Sonic, and, and, and that time period was probably the best Sonic had. And then immediately after that was the downfall of Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, Bob. We do have Sonic Adventure fans in the chat. <laughs> I love Sonic Adventure. Sonic Adventure is not bad. Sonic Adventure. That's another that's Son- another situation where Sonic Adventure, yeah, it's good. But Sonic Adventure 2 just eats its lunch. Sonic Adventure 2 became bad almost immediately after it came out. And when it came it's out, par- it was amazing. And then it's like part a, of my, a few months later, it was it was not amazing anymore. It's part of my continuing ongoing theory that's more of a fact that there are no bad games on the Sega Dreamcast. <laughs> it's only when the games leave the Dreamcast and get ported to other consoles then magically they become not as good true i i i support that theory will it's yeah. impossible there are to no find bad, a bad yeah. game on, on the on the dreamcast yes i Even challenge if you think you. it's bad if you think it's bad somebody asked me like well, what about that one ljn game that's on the dreamcast it's like that doesn't count that's not that bad <laughs> um it so uh, we wanted a Dreamcast really bad because we wanted to keep supporting mm-hmm. Sega, but for whatever reason, we ended yeah. up with an N64. I don't know what happened. We ended up with a... Well, that was... See, because we had an N64 because that came out before Dreamcast. And then the Dreamcast came out, and then immediately the PS2 era started. Ah. And from there, it's like... You know... Oh, we, yeah, we were that's... just like everybody else. Skip, you know, wait, see what the PS2 has to offer. But then, oh... The GameCube and Xbox are also coming out. What do those have to offer? So it's like you want a Dreamcast, but by the time we were ready to get it, they 
Sega announced they were pulling out of the console race. So it's like, why bother? Uh, I, I remember I the N64 era, that was when Sega was really going through it. Uh, yeah, because that was, that was when they were doing the Saturn, uh, which famously did not have uh, a mainline Sonic game of its own. It only got a port of Sonic 3D Blast. It had Sonic R, um, and it had Sonic Jam, which was a compilation of the Genesis games. So that was, according to Wikipedia, the fifth console generation. That yes. is uh, the a whole bunch of crap that nobody cares about. Uh, Atari yeah. Jaguar, <laughs> remember that? Yep. Um, S Sega 32X, which was this monstrosity that you plug on top of the Sega Genesis. Uh, Sega Saturn, which probably confused people because it was yeah. very similar to... Uh, <laughs> What Sega CD or whatever, or or, whatever, or or even 32x the attachments that you can get. Well, it was it was weird because the the Saturn came out like a few months after the 32x did, so it's like why bother with the 32x? Yeah, that, Sega really really shit the bed on this. Yeah. Uh, that was in the same generation as the PlayStation and the N64, so that explains why we were N64 kids because yeah. Sega. Uh, did a bad job <laughs> that it, yeah. right, right here um and there were really not there were no sonic games there there's uh S sonic cd uh that's on the sega cd exactly and yeah. uh there was sonic r which was a terrible game yeah no, sonic r is very bad and that was for the sega saturn right yeah saturn again the saturn had sonic r Sonic 3D Blast and Sonic Jam, which was a compilation. But Sonic 3D Blast was also on the Genesis, and we had that already. Yes. Yeah. And it wasn't like the the Saturn version was like you know that much greater. You know, it's it, no. It, it's not like when they ported games to the Wii and those games were shit. It was like you know. Yeah. Uh, so that explains why we we skipped out on that and then the dreamcast yeah. happened and then uh our mother famously would not allow us to have a dreamcast and she would make deals with us to get good grades <laughs> and then we'd get the good grades and then she would uh, go back on her word <laughs> she would find the loophole she would find the loophole and uh yeah. and the loophole was always i'm your mother i don't care i'll do whatever i want yep <laughs> yep uh we eventually did get a dreamcast many years later our good buddy uh tim simpson lp soldier 0303 on Twitch. Gave us his. Yes. Um and we still have it. Still works beautifully. Thank you, Tim, for that. Um you have it, right? I have it here, yes. Because I I, yeah. I wanted to do a video with it and then I didn't. Uh I have a uh version of Mario sixty four that was ported to the Dreamcast that I wanted to try. Really? Yes. Uh oh. Uh, I even bought burnt I even bought like DVDs to burn for it. Oh wow. <laughs> Um, but anyway, the, we ended up, we skipped Dreamcast and got a GameCube. Yes. And we used to go to Sears, play the Dreamcast all the time, <laughs> play, yep. play our, play, visit our good friend, Sonic. We would play, uh, uh, Sonic Adventure and whatnot. Uh, then we finally got ourselves a Sonic Adventure 2 battle for the GameCube. Yes. Love that game. Game is sick. Yeah. Uh, but Mario Sunshine existed, and that is a much better. Yeah. Game. So, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, Sonic. And then, for whatever reason, I, 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 I struggled to find a good 3D Sonic game after that. <laughs> I mean, it was a, it wasn't just you. <laughs> Sonic definitely had some problems in the 3D era. Um, throw. I, I would say, I think it's pretty safe to say. Actually, no, it's not. I thought it was pretty safe to say that Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations were the only good 3D Sonic games. But apparently everybody's, you know, saying, oh, where's the Sonic Unleashed remastered no. collection? Game sucks. Sonic, that game sucks. Sonic Unleashed <laughs> has really, 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 really good Sonic levels. Problem is, it also has really, 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 really bad sonic werehog levels and those levels take up roughly half the game 
And the problem is, when you have half of a bad game, you have a bad game. I, I don't think that the Sonic levels in Sonic Unleashed are even that good. Like, they're good, but, th but they're not anywhere near enough to make up for the trash Werehog levels. They're... They're better than what they had been in the past. Right. And they were the stepping stone to colors and generation. I also feel exactly the same about Arkham Knight. <laughs> that game is 50% of a good game and 50% of a bad game because of the stupid tank levels. There's too many tank levels. There's too much tank stuff and the tank sucks. I don't think the tank stuff was as bad as you make it out to be, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking right. about Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> right. Um, uh, that's not to say Sonic hasn't had good games. Uh, you like Sonic? No, Sonic Gen has had, yeah, Sonic has had great games. Generations, which is just a rehashing of all of his best stuff, so like that doesn't even really yes. count. Yeah, Sonic but Colors, which they're remaking, and because yeah. it's so good and everybody likes it. Yeah, I I will say, yeah, Sonic Generations was a lot of like classic levels, but it was like the first time they had finally nailed what 3D Sonic should be. Right. You know, after, you know, so many iterations and trying so much, it was the, it was one of the first times that 3D Sonic, you know, aside from colors, felt right and it felt natural and it felt like this is what a, a modern Sonic game should be going forward. We're leaving out Sonic Mania because uh, I didn't think we were talking about 2D stuff yet, but uh, the chat wants us to mention Sonic Mania. Sonic Mania is, I okay. think, the best thing to, ha to, to come out of Sonic since Sonic and Knuckles to be honest it's definitely top tier mm. like it, it's amazing that they were able to craft something so good out of what is essentially an elevated fan game right um <laughs> what else though out of 2d so honestly there was that sonic 4 game that was like uh there was a 3d side scroller uh yeah some people would call that two and a half d and i think those people are stupid um <laughs> I actually liked that game, and a lot of people yeah, I like, did not. Yeah, I, I liked Sonic 4. Uh, it was two episodes, one and two. I I didn't think that was bad at all. I, I wouldn't put it in like my top five or whatever, but I thought it was. I thought that was thought that was a good game. I don't understand. I mean, no, I don't understand where like the the level of hatred towards Sonic 4 really comes from, because yeah, like the physics aren't the same as it was in the Genesis, but there you it really couldn't be. It was a whole new game, it was a whole new engine. Uh Edward Bova says, don't forget about Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Mm, I'm, I'm gonna forget about that. Uh, I don't I don't we I don't I don't mess with that. I always <laughs> threaten I'm gonna I'm gonna buy and play one of those, but I never do. <laughs> I will say the Sonic Advanced games are very good. Yes. Uh, also Sonic uh Rush for the ds is very sonic good. rush is one of my favorite sonic games like of the entire series i now, think it that game is fantastic i think the level design is brilliant i think the music is very unique for the, the sonic music is series. very good yes yeah have you I ever mean, sonic music is always good but have you ever played sonic uh rush adventure the second one yes is yes that, is that bad <laughs> it's not bad but it's it's not as good as Sonic Rush, mm -hmm. and it's very weird because they tried to add like an adventure mode okay. to it, and it just kind of like ruins the pacing of everything. Because Sonic Rush is a traditional level to level game, where Sonic Adve Rush Adventure it's like a pirate theme, and you gotta like do sailing and crap. So would not recommend. I mean, may maybe I would recommend. <laughs> Maybe if you really like Sonic Rush that much, maybe you yeah. maybe you'll like it. Um, so that's the best stuff that I can remember that's come out of Sonic. Uh, Sonic Heroes not really that good. Sonic yeah. the Hedgehog 2006 is famously terrible. Yes. Uh, we had Sonic uh, and the and the Secret Rings, I believe, for the yeah. Wii, and that was we got that like when we got the Wii, we were like, oh, a Sonic game, yay, on the Wii. And we yeah, got that. That was up, and that was incredibly disappointing. That was that was a disappointment. Uh, but that was it was Sonic and the Secret Rings, and Sonic 06 came out at the same time. 
Mm-hmm. And I remember people would ask me, why did you get Sonic and the Secret Rings? Why didn't you get Sonic 06? And I would have to tell people, you don't understand. <laughs> Sonic and the Secret Rings makes Sonic 06... Sonic, Sonic 06 makes Sonic and the Secret Rings look like a masterpiece. That's how bad Sonic 06 was. I need to play Sonic 06. I've only seen other people it. play it. I have it for 360. And it's not available on backwards compatibility. Wow, that's like the only game. <laughs> yeah. I think I have it on Steam. 06? It was never released on Steam. Really? Yeah. Let's see what Sonic games I have. as. Uh, I, there was a Humble Bundle a while ago. that had like a million Sonic games. Yes. I know... Generations is on Steam. Sonic Lost World is on Steam. That's a weird game, Sonic Lost World. Uh, I liked the little I played of it. Yeah, it, we had it for the Wii U. Um, it's not bad, but like, there's a lot of weird ideas in it. Like, Sonic doesn't run automatically. You have to hold down a specific run button. And oh, they tried to add parkour that. elements to it, which sounds like a good idea in theory, but like, it wasn't implemented very well. Uh, I don't have any Sonic games on Steam. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Interesting. There's a PC port of 06, and it looks great. Uh, there's this PC port of 06? What are you talking about? I know that there's uh, an att- there's a, a fan attempt to remake 06. Oh. Like, oh, that's but actually make it work. Yeah. That's probably what he means. Uh, I would like to see that. I would like to play 06 because I still hold fast that Sonic Forces might be worse. (laughs) I can tell you with certainty that it is not. Sonic Forces at least runs. (laughs) Sonic 06 But not really, though. It doesn't really, though. There's one level that that you just can't get through. You got like a a roll of the dice if you can get through it. No, that, that it, one like water slide level. It's like a roll of the dice if you're making it to the end of that level I mean, in, in a no, day. There, there's a there's a roll of the dice, and then there's just like you fall through the level geometry every two. That's seconds. what it is. That's what that level it's, is. Oh no, no, dude, dude, <laughs> trust me, just trust me. It's it's no it's nowhere near the same league as Sonic 06. Well, how can I play Sonic 06 now if I, do I have uh, to plug in my Xbox 360? Because that's you have not to plug happen. in your 360. Yeah. No, thank you. I guess I'm never playing Sonic 06. Oh, I can, lucky you. Until I can put it into my freaking Xbox, I'm not playing it. <laughs> um. So anyway, what else can we uh, can we attribute to uh, Sonic's 30th? anniversary our love for sonic the hedgehog uh what about all the weird like spin-off games that he's had like Like sonic drift 2 for the game gear (laughs) remember that one i love that that was a that was a weird like racing game apparently sonic drift 1 never came out in north america oh that explains that (laughs) so that's yeah so that's why we only ever knew about sonic drift 2 uh, uh, interestingly, uh, this game is half the resolution of the tiny ass one inch Game Gear screen because the top yeah. half is is relegated to the uh, uh, the the map. Yeah. I loved this game. I don't know if it's good. <laughs> I just, back then I used to love shitty games because it's just what yeah. you had. You know, it's not like I would go to the store and drop do research and drop and money we got on a this game. Game like. We got this one well after like the the Game Gear was like at the end of its life. Mm-hmm. I think we got it on like a clearance sale. I don't know. I I, I love this thing. I didn't know uh, that yeah. that 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 one character that's in Sonic Mania with the freaking uh oh uh, with the Indiana Fang. Jones hat. Yeah, I didn't know he yeah. was. Uh, yeah, I didn't know he was in this. He was a he was actually like a a big character during that era. Like, he debuted in Sonic Triple Trouble for the Game Gear, but, mm-hmm. like, 
he was in a lot of other games around that time. And then like when they turned it to Sonic Adventure, they like wiped him from the face of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> if you want a collection of like weird Sonic supporting characters who don't exist anymore, uh Sonic the Fighters. Have you ever played yes. that? Yes. Uh, I haven't played it, but that, that's a cavalcade of uh weird Sonic characters. Right. Uh Bang the the Sniper. Also known as Knack the Weasel in some territories. Um, here's here's Sonic the just dynamite. actually beating the living shit out of Amy. <laughs> this was made on the engine as Virtua Fighter 2 because there was a period where Sega just wanted a whole bunch of fighting games made out of this engine. Amy it does not look like Amy. This is pre-Sonic it's, Adventure uh, Amy. Yeah, pre-Sonic Adventure, Amy debuted in Sonic CD, and like when you look at her, you're like, that can't be Amy. <laughs> oh, here's a weird character. Bark. Bark the polar bear, yes. I've never seen that character before in my life. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, yeah, like I said, there's a lot CD. of weird characters. Uh, I forgot. I think it's the Sonic Gems collection for GameCube. We have, and that's on that collection. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I would love to see them finally make a goddamn Sonic Adventure 3. Uh, I, they seem to have no interest in it, but I mean, they're struggling so hard to make a good 3D Sonic game. I don't understand why they don't just get hit the nostalgia bone and just go for, for Sonic Adventure 3. I don't know what that will do. You know, just of making Sonic Adventure 3 or calling a game Sonic Adventure 3. I don't know if that will be enough to reignite passion in the series for people who don't already have passion for it, you know? I think it... Because they, they, they tried doing it with Sonic 4, calling a game Sonic 4, and that, and people apparently don't like that. Well, that was a weird... It was... It was Sonic 4 was uh, Xbox Live Arcade. It was download only. And yeah. uh, it, they released it in episodes, and they only did two episodes, right? Yeah. And that was that was around the time when people were when developers were like, everything's gonna release episodically now. That's gonna be the yeah. new thing. And then it wasn't the new thing, and it didn't take. So I think that's part of why that game uh, wasn't received well. Uh, but also, if when you do something like that, when you call it the fourth game in a beloved franchise, or you know. You're gonna revitalize Sonic Adventure. There is a lot of really high expectations, and and I yeah. I, I think it would be really, I think releasing a Sonic Adventure three would garner a lot of hype, but would be really easy to uh, disappoint people with. Yeah, because I think people would get a little too hyped about it. I love Games D says it was also not good. <laughs> I think it was good. I liked it. Yeah, I I think so. We are Sonic 4 household. Yes. Uh, it wasn't like amazing, but... Uh, yeah, no. I liked it better than the first Sonic, so... Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, I am disappointed they're not going back to like a Sonic Adventure type game. But also like... A problem with Sonic Adventure is that all the other characters uh, weren't fun to play as. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but that and that's part of it. You know, it can't be Sonic Adventure if you just play as Sonic. You have to right. play as other characters. Yeah, they would have to make the other characters more fun. Uh, yeah, Knuckles, I think, was fine. I think those search levels were were fine. Knuckles would be better now, because now they have they would have the technology to like do that better. <laughs> you know, because like sometimes finding those emeralds was like a shit show. Right, like you'd be standing over it, it'd be beeping erratically and nothing you don't find anything um, imagine trying to speed run that game no that those those people are first of all insane at those levels but also yeah. they just get screwed on those levels mm -hmm. sometimes the emerald shards just just load in like a spot that just doesn't work for the speed run and then they yeah. just get screwed yeah they're all randomly generated um Tails and Robotnik levels would need to be completely re redesigned because those yeah. those were not fun. Um, what else? I mean, get Biggs the cat out of there. 
<laughs> um, yeah, I don't know who else there even was. Uh, well, that was in Sonic 2, Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic Adventure 1, there was uh, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, Big, I don't remember Amy uh, levels. And I think there were Amy levels. I don't remember what they were. I don't even remember what the Knuckles levels were. Were, were, there, were they Emerald Hunts? In the first game? Or was pretty Sonic Adventure. I don't remember much about the first game. Yeah. I would be honest. Oh, I think Amy was just a Chow Hunt situation. Yeah, you can play as Amy. I think she's literally just walking around trying to get Chows. Yeah. Yeah, and E one oh two gamma was the other Yeah, he w- he was as. he played like uh like Robotnik and uh you, yeah uh, and Tails in the second game. Um they would need to also make a whole new Chow Garden for Sonic Adventure. So you know you know what's oh, yeah. taking them from making a Sonic Adventure three? They would have to uh make a game worth seventy dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and right now they seem to be just just happy as can be to fart a game out with <laughs> with barely any work and yeah. and no quality assurance and uh and and just and then they're fine with it well here's hoping that sonic rangers or whatever it's called they keep talking about how it's going to be different how it's going to be like a new like step forward for sonic in the series and honestly, I kind of hope it is because that implies that you're putting more energy and effort into it than you have been previously. That you know, like Sonic needs to do something new and unique in order to, you know, mean something in 2021 or 22 or whatever. I have no expectations for that game. I think it's going to be bad because every single mainline Sonic game, or, or I'm sorry, every single mainline 3D Sonic game has been bad since Sonic Adventure. Too, except with the exception of colors and generations yeah i don't like to count generations I, because that is literally just a compilation it's a compilation but it's it's a glorified remake but the the levels for sonic adventure one two and heroes don't play like they did back then they play mm-hmm. like sonic colors okay so that's what I mean by like they took the 3D Sonic formula and perfected it there. They found a way to make it like work and be fun and unique and a true Sonic experience. That's why I count Generations as its own thing and as one of the best Sonic games, period, because of what they were able to do with it, in addition to it being a celebration of Sonic. Milk is Cruel says Sonic Generations was the best game of all time. Now, do you agree with that, Will? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I I would put it in my top five, but... Of all time? Every game ever? Well, top five Sonic games. Okay. Uh, I love games. D says Heroes and Colors and Gens were good. Un- Unleashed was debatable. Heroes, I don't think was very good. <sighs> Heroes is disappointing. Heroes had Heroes bad level design. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Heroes started out good, but as as it went on, it was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. And it was one of those games where they made you play it over and over again with all the different characters. Right. And you really only wanted to play as Sonic and his team. Yeah, Sonic Adventure 2, we played the shit out of Sonic Adventure 2, and all I ever did was replay the Sonic levels. <laughs> yeah, the Sonic the and Shadow levels. levels, yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's us just rehashing our love and hatred for Sonic the Hedgehog the franchise yes. because to love Sonic is to also hate Sonic <laughs> I hope that uh, we get I hope I hope things get a little better for, for, and, and Sonic Mania was a good look into uh, how things can be for Sonic yeah uh, it's, it's in Sega's the ball is in Sega's court whether or not they want to play off of that yeah my only my one thing with Sonic Mania, and I can also apply this to Sonic Generations, those are the best Sonic games of like the last few years or whatever. 
but they were heavily reliant on the games of the past. Right. And I would love for Sonic Rangers or whatever it's called to not be. Like, I don't want to see the goddamn Green Hill Zone. You call it something else. I don't want to see, you know, too much focus on, you know, oh, remember this from past Sonic games? Remember this from Panasonic games? I don't want to see classic Sonic in the game at all. I want them to, you know, forge a new path forward. I want them to do something new and different with Sonic Rangers. I don't want to see, you know, I don't want them to be so reliant. Because if you are, like, if you're so reliant on your past, then you really only have one trick to pull over and over again, and that gets stale really fast. I think part of the problem is that uh, they keep trying to do something different, and they're doing the wrong things different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you can you can levy that against Sonic Lost Worlds, too. They tried to do something very different, and it didn't really work out. Uh, having, having the creator character in Sonic Forces was probably one of their best ideas executed so poorly. <laughs> <laughs> well no the creative character was wasn't the problem the game that the creative character was a part of was the problem and the way that you play as the creative character was a problem it just had weird like whip things <laughs> yeah yeah the, the freaking uh yeah, yeah the, the grapple hook uh, it made no sense why they would rely on, yeah. on that for that one specific character is so very stupid anyway uh we hope things are uh get better for our boy over there yeah uh hey we got uh hello cluedo with five months missed watching you guys hope uh hello hope you're doing well thank you hello cluedo i am good uh i guess will's good too dark dark yep. light <laughs> thank you for the thousand bits bob gonna roll around with blocks in minecraft looks pretty freaking sick also we need some lego sonic the hedgehog um that exists. Uh, yes, they made a playset of it, and it was also part of uh, Lego Dimensions back when that was a video game. Yes, uh, I do want to play the Le- the the Lego. I mean, I'm sorry, the Minecraft Sonic. That looks sick. I don't know when I'll do it, but I do want to do it. Yeah. Mako Fox with 50 bits. Did y'all hear the news about the FNAF creator getting canceled? No, and I don't care. Uh, yeah, I could care less about FNAF as a game. We've played the original. I played it. It's it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, I different. wouldn't say he got canceled. He more like just decided he'd rather step away and not deal with this shit. Yeah, I don't uh, I get like people are interested in the lore and stuff, but I I'm a firm believer in the in uh that guy and not knowing what he's doing and the community creating the lore themselves. Oh, definitely. Def- and, definitely, and like, and like making shit up to fill in the blanks of whatever the hell this guy had made because it doesn't make yeah. any freaking sense yeah no it's it, it's one of those situations where you, the product that came out was so minimalist that everybody just started filling in the holes with their own random theories and ideas that that guy might be the luckiest game developer in, in the world oh yeah because that oh, game that game yeah. is not that good <laughs> um Rock and Val, thanks for the 12 months. Keep up the great work, guys. Hope everyone is well. I hope we will be able to attend conventions safely soon. Thank you, Rock and Val. Uh, yeah. Hopefully Long Island Retro uh, will be a thing next year, probably. Yes. Probably. Although, I don't know, because I'm getting emails saying that New York Comic Con is happening. Oh, did I tell you I'm going to too many games? You are. And apparently it's the same weekend as New York Comic Con. <laughs> Oh really? I didn't know that. Interesting. So, to do, I don't know if you want to come. Do whatever you want. Well, I I put in. I I'm fan registered for New York Comic Con. Okay. Um, uh, that I still don't know if I'm going to even go to that, much less go to Pennsylvania for too many games. But uh, right. I'll uh, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> uh, anyway, gamer lady, three months. Love the podcast. Thank you, gamer lady. Uh, Late Snake, thank you for the 500 bits. And Spoopy Girl, thanks for the 200 bits. Uh, there was a Prime Day uh, Prime Day deal today mm-hmm. for Twitch money. Oh. Like a Twitch gift card. Yeah. 
uh it is not a deal anymore but i copped it it was like you know it was like 20 dollars off a 100 dollars gift card so it's just free twitch money yeah uh all right sorry you guys missed it are they still doing that if you buy an amazon gift card we'll give you like ten dollars oh what i would buy so many if that was the case it was like if you buy a if you buy a forty dollar gift card, we'll give you like an extra ten. I don't see that. I would buy. Oh. I, w- I would. I would invest a here lot. It in, okay, in here it is. Here we go. This is it. Also, they said they would like give you like four months of Kindle Unlimited for free if you've never signed up before. I go to the page and it's saying it's only going to give me one month for free, even though I've never signed up before. That's annoying. Yeah. Amazon. I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah, be honest with me. No, go go ahead. Amazon's a a, a a mega corporation that is that is too powerful and needs to be stopped. Yes, however, they are, they are the evil empire. <laughs> how it, it's it's like it's it's like we are living in the dystopian future, and there is one company that is ruling yeah. the country. <laughs> however, it's just too convenient. It really is. It's just too easy to dump all your money there, and it's see, it, it's cheaper than everything else. Like it's it's just hard to fight against them. It, 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 yeah, you know, our 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 overlord. Yeah, here it is. Prime Day is here. Uh, Prime exclusive deal. Get ten. Get a ten dollar promotional credit when you buy forty dollars in Amazon gift cards. Uh, give me that. Where do you see that? Link me that. I'll. I'll put it in the keep. Cause Milk, Milk is cruel says it's not cheaper. Okay, dude, I don't know what to tell you. It's cheaper a lot of the time. I, what do you want me to say? Some of the times, Amazon does screw you in certain places. I, I, I've, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to say it's cheaper all of the time. That would be ridiculous. But it is cheaper the, a lot of the time. Check the top of the keep. I'm, I'm gonna be honest though. This Prime Day, not great. No, <laughs> did not find. Not find a lot of good deals. I got a book from my daughter, and I got Dana Barrett from Ghostbusters because she was only ten bucks. <laughs> but other than that, and nothing really. I'm debating whether or not to get Resident Evil Village, but I might just wait for that because I'm forward, I'm playing seven right now, and Lord knows when I'm going to get to it. Apply code to your account. Uh. Okay, I'm gonna hit apply code. Coupon applied. Reload forty dollars. How do I? How how do I? E gift card. No, I want to reload. Reload your balance. No. Uh. Use my credit card. Do forty dollars. Can I do this a million times, or can I only do forty dollars? I mean, I'm sure you can only do it once. All right, did it. I don't know if it works, but I did it. All right. Yeah, I'm going to try this after we get off the call. I'm going to link it in the chat with an affiliate link. Oh. There you go. You can give it a shot yourself. If you spend a lot of money on Amazon, there you go. Save a couple bucks. Yeah. Um, anyway. All right. BB Retro says, yeah, just go into a Barnes and Noble. What does that mean? Listen, we Barnes and Nobles were all shutting down on Long Island a while, like a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, and I went in and everything, everything there was 40 to 50% off because it was shutting down. They literally yeah. had to sell everything. And I was yeah. literally in Barnes and Noble, fire sale, everything must go on my phone going Amazon's cheaper. And this is why Barnes and Noble is closing everything, or it was yeah. at the time. Yeah, there's like I think maybe four stores still on Long Island. I was literally walking around with my phone, going, "That looks cool," and then buying it off of Amazon, even though the place was fire sale. Sh- sh- I will everything. say, like when it got to the very end, like when it was like ninety percent off everything, like that's how like most of my graphic novels came to be was mm-hmm. <laughs> through them. So. I ain't complaining. Uh, all right. Whoa! Check out the new analog PC Game Boy PC adapter coming out. That is not an analog. 
you're i guess you literally mean analog i think i ordered this epilogue gb operator i'm pretty sure i ordered this interesting yeah it looks pretty sick yeah uh benny our clips editor sent that to me uh anyway uh let's move on to the Oh, that was Man of Steel with five bits. I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh, let's move on to the Xbox Design Lab. It's back, baby! Woo! Yeah, woo! -hoo! I'm well, actually what, really excited for this. What is the Xbox Design Lab, Will? The Xbox Design Lab is a website uh, officially uh, created by Microsoft where you can go and create the Xbox Series X controller of your dreams. You can make it any combination of colors you want. Uh, you can make it look as pretty or as gaudy as you want. You can put your gamer tag on it if you want, uh, and they will send it straight to you. So you can make your own unique special controller. Uh, it, it, uh, we were, uh, I was very upset when, when this wasn't a thing for the series X for, for it, it took a while for them to, for them to, well, it was, it was a thing for the Xbox one. Right. And it was really nice. Uh, it was awesome. I loved it. Yeah. They didn't do elite controllers, which I know people were asking for. I'm still uh, upset but they, did that do, they don't do that. They did regular uh, Xbox One controllers. You can you can do any kind of color combination you want, and for a time you can even get your favorite football team logo oh. printed on the. On the um, they shut it down before the launch of the Series X and the Series S, and then they recently just relaunched it for the Series S and the Series X. So yes. you, the controllers you're getting are series controllers, uh, but they will work on Xbox One. Wait, what is this? What is what? The the video they have has the... Uh... This is for the original design lab. Yeah, I'm going through. They didn't update a lot of the, the key art. <laughs> That's so lame. <laughs> yeah, this is for the original. This is the wrong D-pad, dude. What are you doing? Yeah. Come on. Um, where's Where's the actual design lab? Let me make a uh, friggin' scroll thing. Up. Go up, go. I'm oh, up. This is the, uh... Oh, this is just the presser. Yeah, scroll all. Are you all the way at the top? Go all the way to the top. Go to the top. Okay. I'm at the okay. top. Uh, scroll down a little bit. It's the first green text where it says Xbox Design Lab. Five years ago, we introduced Xbox Design Lab. Five with the number or five with the word? The word. Five years. Oh my God, dude. It's like barely green. Okay. <laughs> uh, design yours. Here it is. Yay, look at all the cool stuff you can do. You can make it yellow. You can change the back and make it white. Wow. You can change the bumpers. Yeah. Cool. Look at how disgusting. I'm going to make this one look. Ewy. Gross. <laughs> I love the fact that you can have the... Uh, xbox 360 styled uh abxy situation yeah yeah I'm, I'm really happy about that uh you can't change the xbox logo but that's because that is uh transparent so that all white yeah. light can shine through it so i, I yeah. understand why that you can't change that you also your options for the abxy and the view menu and share buttons are not as robust as the other things you can change yeah, it's a little annoying. Uh, it's, it's yeah, especially like if you're going for a specific color scheme. So we ordered some. Uh, the day yes. it was announced, I was live streaming and I decided we were going to get a couple of these because I think that'd make a cool video. Um, yeah. Probably won't get a lot of views because I just did one on, <laughs> on these PlayStation controllers uh, and it bombed pretty terribly. Um, but I don't give a shit. I'll do one anyway. Uh, so I ordered this one just because I thought this would look cool. Uh, it's like this black is a different black. It looks like a like a cooler black, like a. That's not the carbon black. I. It looks like a different black to me. What do they call it on on a regular old Xbox controller? Because on this it's carbon it, black. It is carbon black. Yeah. Xbox Series X controller. Because there's also Storm Gray, is like the next darkest one carbon black okay so this is just a friggin black controller i'm getting 
But yeah. I got uh, white buttons, a uh, white D-pad, and like a blue-ish, teal-ish uh, thumbsticks because I thought this was a cool wolf den thing. And I also got an engraving that, is- that says wolf den, but uh, I don't think uh, it shows up on this picture. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Will got one. Yes. And guess what? He opted for the color that is also available. <laughs> okay, so I got I opted for like the a red design. They do make a red controller, yes, but it's not this specific color scheme. I wanted more uh black in it because the, the official release red one has a has a white back and I think white thumbsticks, and I wanted it I wanted it black. I wanted a red and black look. Also, I like the 360 buttons. So, so. I thought it was all red. Uh oh it is all red. But the the back plate is white. It's definitely white. This is uh what it looks like. It looks like this. Yeah. So and yeah, it's got the white. So Will's yeah. and, and this would glow white too. So Will's looks like this. Yeah. So instead of the red A B X Y, you got the uh colored ones. I got the, also yeah. I, I'm just realizing now. Uh, they put a little uh, indicator in the middle of the A, B, X, Y buttons with the colors of each button. So yeah. that I guess w- if it shows up on in a game, you know, you yeah. know what color they are. Interesting. Yeah, they've been doing that for a while. Very oh, Xbox One controllers, yeah. Uh, and then we got a third one. Now this one I got because I love the fact that you can get the Xbox 360 style A, B, X, Y buttons. This mm-hmm. is an oh. homage uh, to my favorite Xbox 360 controller that I had. I had a pink Xbox 360 controller and I tried to mimic it as close as possible. Yeah. Uh, I think I did an okay job. Uh, yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah, there it is. Um, yeah. There is a darker color for the thumbsticks and the D-pad you can get, but uh, I think the lighter one just looks better. It's either yeah. It was either too dark or too light. It were my options. Also, the uh, share buttons and, st- and, and menu buttons and stuff, there weren't really any good options for that, so that's going to be pretty dark. Yeah. Um, but I think this is going to be really cool. And also, you can get a charging stand with it. However, oh, that's right. I believe these charge stands are still the Xbox One colors. As far as I, I think so. I think they're also designed for the Xbox One controller, which so, means that the battery pack you're supposed to use won't fit. Well, y- yes. <laughs> so I had a little <laughs> bit of trouble with that with mine because I have the, uh, I I ended up getting one of the charge things. For my Xbox uh, One, yeah. I, I'm sorry, my Xbox Series X controller, uh, and I needed to get a different charge kit for the back, but it still works. Yeah. It, it it works okay. with this. It works with this charge stand. I just needed to get a different play and charge kit. Yeah. Which means that if this comes with a back, it won't work. Yeah, that's a big that's a big pet peeve of mine I, when I it think, comes to like i i think the now they come out they come with both backs i'm not entirely sure i don't think so because a lot of like the playing chart especially like from like nyco or power a or whatnot the back plate is either black or white it, it so it, if you have a different colored controller it's gonna clash it should be noted that the uh stand and the play and charge kit and whatever are made by a different company yes it's licensed by microsoft so uh it's their fault <laughs> yeah so i don't know i i feel like uh i mean it's cool that, I'll, that i'm gonna get like a pink stand it might be a different color pink and the the charge plate on the back who knows what the hell is gonna happen with that yeah that might be a problem so uh we'll see when we get it i guess Yes. Uh, and if you wanted to do this for yourself, you should just go to designlabs.xbox.com. Uh, they are 
Uh, they start at sixty nine ninety nine. Nice. Um, it's an extra nine ninety nine if you want to add an engraving up to sixteen characters. Um, and you, if you order now, you can get it uh, by July twenty first. Uh, M three theory says they give you two back plates now. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I remember because I had to buy a new uh, plan charge kit. Right. Well, um, I I haven't bought an Xbox Series controller, so I don't know. Did you see this thread, Will? Jake Decker what? uh of Obsidian made a thread very similar to your thread. Oh, yes. Yes, I have seen this. <laughs> this is uh Xbox controllers as album covers. And he he went to the design lab and just kind of remade out al famous album covers as Xbox controllers and he yeah. did a great job. These are awesome. He did a very good job. Uh Will has a similar thread. Uh, I have a similar thread with uh, consoles and Batman figures. <laughs> Ooh, I like this Motion City soundtrack one. This is cool. Specifically the Kenner Batman figures. Yes. Anyway, check that out. Oh, it's pretty nice. cool. It's yeah. I mean, it gets pretty pricey. We ended up spending a lot of money on all these controllers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, it's like 70 bucks for a controller is... I've always, I've always had a problem with controller prices. Um, I feel as though... $70 for a custom made Xbox Series controller given what Xbox Series controllers go for isn't bad all things considered um, but it's still way too much money for a controller it adds up very quickly I mean yeah. look if I want another controller for Xbox or Playstation I and I have the ability to customize it myself hell yeah I'm customizing it myself Yeah, you know that's awesome it's upsetting that you can't get an elite controller. I would play a premium for an elite. I would I would pay the elite price plus more to be able to customize an elite controller. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately can't do that. So I'm sure that now that they've relaunched it at the beginning of the series life cycle, they'll start doing it for elite controllers. Maybe for the elite series three. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyway. Uh, we got six months from Jeffrey Sorensen, who says, thanks for giving me something to look forward to on Tuesdays, bros. Thank you, Jeffrey Sorensen, for the six months. Thank you. I'm happy that you're here. Uh, next up, Splatoon 2's online lounge will, uh, the, the feature for that will vanish next month. Oh, yes. oh, boo-hoo, wah. You know that thing everybody was using? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo has announced that uh, has announced that service for Switch Online's lounge feature, primarily used for Splatoon 2, will end July 28th in North America and July 29th in Japan. Here's how Nintendo explains the lounge's function. Players have been able to use the lounge the online lounge feature of the Nintendo Switch Online app to arrange Splatoon 2 online battles using their smart device, such as uh, such as by sending a URL link that allows social media friends to join a room. Once the invitations are accepted, the icon for your friends show up in the online lounge. The mode allows only for private battles between those present in the lounge. The function has only been used for Splatoon 2, and it doesn't seem like a widely used one, so I don't think this is a feature will, that will be missed. Most players probably organize online sessions through other platforms, such as Discord. Uh, back in 2017, Kotaku checked out the then newly launched Nintendo Switch Online app when it hit Android and Apple devices. Chatting seemed fine, but there were issues with using the app. Um, at the time, it was said, it's better than nothing, but not much better. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, it was a, it was an interesting, it, it, it's cool to have a link to send to people, join this room. That's yeah. cool. Uh, if you want to play in the same game as me, here's a link. That's cool. Everything else sucked. So uh, this isn't this isn't a big deal that this is going away. I hope that this yeah. isn't bad news for Splatoon 2 because people still play that game. Even though yeah. 3 is coming out soon, uh, people might interpret this as, uh, uh, you know, Splatoon 3 coming sooner than we think. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure about that. I just think that nobody uses the well, stupid it, feature. It just seems 
seems a way it just seemed like a way to do matchmaking and people had other ways of doing that and they probably weren't using nintendo's app because it was you know cumbersome or hard to use or whatnot it, so. it, it would be good like i used to play splatoon 2 uh on streams and have uh chat play yeah. with me so it would have been cool to be able to just drop a link into the chat and have people join that way um but it was a pain in the ass to use the app so instead of doing that yeah. i just added people from my from my you know switch account uh um, nintendo does explain that while the online lounge feature will be removed the app will continue to allow voice chat adding that no other changes will be made to the app at this time so also notably nintendo i say this every time multiplayer is mentioned in a nintendo first party game uh, Nintendo mm-hmm. is moving away from their shitty garbage uh, uh, multiplayer, like, uh, you know, infrastructure. And it's moving yeah. over to, like, a new system that uh, runs exponentially better. Uh, the first game to use it was uh, Monster Hunter Rise, and it runs great. Yeah. So, I don't know. This could This could also have something to do with that. Hopefully, uh, Splatoon. I mean, but honestly, Splatoon Two was an example of uh, Nintendo's online working good. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's a develop it, it. It's it's not necessarily the Nintendo Switch's fault, or it's not a technical limitation. It's the developers' yeah. fault per game why <laughs> Nintendo's online has been so bad and. Uh, it just so happens that a lot of first party Nintendo games have bad online experiences. Um, yeah. It's not a limitation of the console because other games, other developers do it fine. Overwatch runs fine. Um, yeah. Fortnite runs fine. So, and, and those two games have baked in voice chat. So, this is all Nintendo's fault. That's what I'm trying yeah. to say. Um, so, this will not be missed. Uh, you know, I probably should have used the link feature when I played this game online, uh, like on uh, on live streams. It probably would have made my life a lot easier. I just, honestly, I probably just didn't know it existed. It, it probably, yeah, because Nintendo's app is not great in general. So the feature like this is probably not well advertised to you. But also, I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> and I don't know if I want... Uh, random people to talk to each other you know what i mean <laughs> like yeah. i don't know like i you know i don't know it feels weird I, for, I forgot what the who tweeted it but somebody who had a tweet of lisa simpson in front of a screen and it said stop making multiplayer games i have no friends <laughs> yes i've seen that um i love multiplayer games and I like to play randomly with other people uh i don't like these team-based games that forced me to talk to strangers. Like, like I, yeah. would, I, I really want to play Valorant. I don't want to talk to anybody. And that is yeah. turning me off from playing Valorant. And same thing with Overwatch. Like, Overwatch is great, yeah. but I don't want to talk to anybody. So, there goes that. I played I played Rainbow Six Siege this year, uh, well, last year now, for two seconds, and I was called the F word immediately. Wow. Within seconds. The second I a, turned on the 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 voice chat, I I was called a a, a slur. And that's supposed to be a team based game where yes. you need your teammates to cooperate. Yes. Um. Anyway, meanwhile I'm playing I'm playing Warzone, having a great time. <laughs> I guess it's because there's there's less people on your team. Anyway, uh, moving on, we got Metroid Dread Amiibo doing a cool thing. What do they do? Uh, it gives you it gives Samus three helpful power ups. Oh, when Nintendo releases Metroid Dread for the Switch later this year, the two D side scrolling adventure will also get special Amiibo release featuring uh, Samus Aran and the killer robot known as Emmy. Uh, Nintendo announced the new Metroid Dread Amiibo Tuesday during its E three direct. Um, but didn't say much about what it will do. Now that Metroid Dread Amiibo is available for pre-order, we have a better sense of what Amiibo collectors will get for their purchase. From GameStop's description of the Metroid Dread Amiibo, a new Samus Amiibo figure featuring her suit from Metroid Dread, uh, and an Emmy Amiibo feature 
uh, figure are available in the two pack set. Scan Samus uh, for an extra energy tank to increase your health by 100. Additionally, the, the Samus Amiibo can be tapped to again receive health once per day. The Emmy Amiibo grants Samus a Missile Plus tank, increasing her missile capacity by 10. Additionally, the Emmy Amiibo can be tapped again to replenish to replenish uh, some missiles once per day. In Metroid Games Pass, players had to hunt for their first energy tank, exploring uh, exploring with a precarious amount of health. Uh, but thanks to Nintendo collectible figures, Metroid Dread players have an instant leg up, which ironically removes some of the sense of dread from Dread. So uh, Nintendo is offering something similar, uh, easing of gameplay with New Zelda and Lothwing Amiibo, which ships alongside Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. The fancy figurines enable a new type of fast travel for Link. Um... Nintendo's been doing this with their amiibo. They've been they've been giving you like it kind of feels like a cheat. Like yeah. <laughs> uh, like I I think about uh, Mario Odyssey. Uh, the amiibo that came with that gave you power ups that kind of broke the game. It didn't. It, yeah. it, it wasn't limited like this is. This is once per day, which is kind of better. Except yeah. that you could just use it, save the game, come back the next day, and then use it again. At least that's what it sounds like you could do. Yeah. If you want to, if if you're stuck on a part and you and you need a full, full health or something, but I mean Metroid. You know, I'll say that I'm playing through Metroid: Samus Returns. That game's pretty hard. Um, yeah. But, I mean, if you need health, there's ways to get it in the game without racking your brain too hard. Yeah. Um, like you can just farm enemies. Um. So I don't think this will break the game that much, but it is kind of, you know, this is a little ridiculous that you could just buy a toy that'll just yeah fill up your... That, it, that is essentially a cheat code. Yeah. I mean, it, it's one thing if, like, it was, like, a cosmetic feature or if it was something that didn't, like, actively impact gameplay, but that does, you know, give it... The whole point of the energy tanks and, and the missile capacity increases was she was supposed to find those. That was the whole part of like exploring the world around you and like learning more A about the world and B, you know, slowly becoming more powerful as the game progressed. Now it just sounds like you can just you stay where you are and just scan it once a day and you'll eventually become powerful enough to beat the game without doing anything. I miss that. That this straight up gives you an extra energy tank. Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Cause cause there are a limited amount of energy tanks in the game. I don't know if you can. Yeah, I, I'm. There's a I, there's a set. I mean, traditional Metroid games. There's a set number of energy tanks for you to collect. Does it cap at a certain point, or is it just you? There's just you know not that many. Like like I, I when I, I think about it, well, like Mega Man, like Mega Man, you can. Or every energy tank gives you an energy tank. It's not like you can cap out on energy tanks. Well, if. Uh, if I remember correctly, and I don't know the exact number, but let's say 10. There are 10 energy tanks to collect in Metroid Prime or Metroid Fusion. And those energy tanks just add another 100 to your life bar already. So you start at, you start the game with 100, but then you collect an energy tank and then it's 200. And then another, it's 300 and so on until you get all 10 energy tanks. So that's how it works in, in Mega Man. Metroid. My question, yeah. no, well, I'm saying that's how it works in Mega Man. That's how, because I only play Mega right. Man. <laughs> right. I, I don't remember much about uh, about Metroid because I've only ever played, really, I've only ever played through Zero Mission. No, I'm sorry, Fusion. Um, Fusion. But my question is, if you get all 10 in the game for Dread, yeah. and then you tap this amiibo, do you get an 11th? Hmm. that's my question or is it yeah. going to cap you out because that would be pretty game breaking I think according to Kikisimi it's uh, you get one upgrade and then it's a replenishment yeah that's what it says in the, in this article that you, you, yeah. you, you tap it once and then you get the amiibo energy tank and then you tap it again the next day and it replenishes your health right I missed the part where it gave you an energy tank when I was first talking about this in the beginning when, when I said that yeah. you could just tap it save your game and then tap it again i meant like if you're stuck on a part and uh, right and you need uh and you need health but again this i mean 
it, it shouldn't be that hard to get health. You could just farm enemies and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Edible Jim Sock says, it sounds like there are nine in the game and the amiibo will be the 10th. Yeah, that's kind of... It's then you're locking one energy tank behind a paywall, and I don't like that. That's weird. It yeah. definitely should just be a cosmetic item. That would be way cooler, and I would, I, and that would make me want the amiibo. Like if it was just like a like a special skin. Uh, I mean, I guess there's there's not really skins in Metroid, but it would be cool to be able to tap an amiibo and you get a weird color for for Samus. That would be cool. Yeah, for Mister uh, Mister Metroid for Mr. himself. Metroid um the zero suit yeah <laughs> that would be cool yeah like you can make your suit look like the fusion suit yeah that'd be sick um but i mean nintendo seems to be be locking cheat codes behind amiibo i, I don't yeah. know how i feel about that but their amiibos have been great little collector's items lately like they, they've been made oh, yeah. very well and uh, these look pretty sick uh it's just unfortunate that it, it's a it's a paid cheat code yeah i mean i haven't gotten amiibo since the smash brothers i think solid snake but i might actually get this because i do want to play uh metroid dread the samus returns amiibo was cool because uh the metroid yeah. was squishy yeah i remember that that was pretty cool um anyway i'm excited for metroid dread all you people who say that it doesn't look like it's gonna be worth sixty dollars can get hit by a bus that's that that's a dumb argument i think it's uh, just because it's a side scroller it doesn't mean it's not worth 60 bucks i think it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be great uh i yeah, will say be... I, i'm playing through samus returns right now and i like the game a lot uh it's not amazing <laughs> <laughs> um i got some problems with it there's a lot of bullshit there's a lot i did i didn't expect metroid to have a lot of bullshit where like you you oh. you you like enter an area and immediately get killed <laughs> like like it's got like dark well, souls bullshit well i mean well first of all dark souls is technically a metroid game it's got the same type of like level layout and whatnot okay. but also dude remember it's a remake of a game boy game right where bullshit like that was prevalent <laughs> yes you're you're right so they they probably kept that in there because that's what was in the original game and lastly the metroid games are all about like you know, exploring the world and like going back to places that you originally couldn't venture through, you know, once you've got all the right upgrades that you can, you know, progress, you know, properly. So I remember Metroid Prime, there was a, there was a room you, you could enter at any time, but as soon as you enter, you get warning saying, hey, you're going to burn alive in this room. Get out of there. That That um, is so also back in with your, Samus Returns. Yeah, you had to you had to go back with the proper suit. Uh, I will say I am pleased with the linearity of Samus Returns. It, 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 there is a little bit of backtracking, but it is pretty easy to figure out what to do and where to yeah. go. So I am happy with that aspect. I thought I was going to not like it because of that, but I, yeah. I actually, I, I, I'm enjoying that part of it. Um, what I'm, another criticism I have is that, uh, there's like uh there's like 40 bosses or something like you fight the metroid like 40 yeah. times and each time uh like i think like every five times the they gain a new ability that is like slightly different so it feels yeah. like you're fighting the same boss a billion times and it's kind of right. anno it's kind of just annoying um so there it, it's it's you know it's a weird game but uh, it, yeah. like you said it is a remake of a friggin' Game Boy game. Yeah. Uh, maybe I should play through Fusion again. I remember I loved Fusion. Fusion is very good. Fusion is also, uh, compared to other Metro games, fairly linear. Because mm -hmm. there's a computer you interact with that tells you where to go. I played through that whole game without a strategy guide uh, during a time in my life where I definitely would have just put it down if I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like like now uh i mean now i kind of put games down but like Me samus returns i might have put Sa i might have fallen off of samus returns a little bit if i was playing it like on my own with like off stream or something yeah. um but fusion for whatever reason i i 
was drawn to beat that game. And I had other things going on in my life. I did not need to play Fusion, but I I, I, I liked it enough to to play through the whole thing. Yeah, Fusion was very good. Um. Anyway, next news. Yes, Cyberpunk is back on the PlayStation Store after being in jail for 180 days. <laughs> that is a long time. Yes, Cyberpunk 2077 returns to Sony's PlayStation Store on June 21st, more than 180 days after the PlayStation 4 version of the game was pulled for, uh, from sale by Sony amidst complaint, complaints about the game's performance. The announcement was made in a regulatory disclosure by CD Projekt, the parent company of CD Projekt Red. The return of Cyberpunk 2077 to Sony's digital store comes after the developer CD Projekt Red's release of multiple major patches and hot fixes for the game. Recent updates have targeted hundreds of bugs and improved performance of last-gen console versions of the game. In December, Sony delisted uh, the game from the PlayStation Store. Sony Interactive Entertainment said in a statement at the time that it strives to ensure a high level of customer satisfaction and subsequently remove the PS4 game, which is also playable on PS5, from the digital store. SIE pledged full refunds for customers who purchased the digital version of Cyberpunk from the PlayStation Store. Sony's actions at the time followed an apology from CD Projekt Red's parent company, Executives, uh, in which CD Projekt Management admitted to not showing the game on base last-gen consoles before it premiered and, in consequence, not allowing you to make a more informed decision about your purchase. We would have paid more attention to making it play better on PS4 and Xbox One, read a note signed by uh, Marcin Iwiski, uh, founder of CD Projekt and its board of directors. Uh, CD Projekt asked customers to seek refunds from retailers, but Sony did not have a refund policy in place for digital purchases. In January, uh, Iwinski offered a more detailed apology, and CD Projekt outlined a long-term plan to fix Cyberpunk, uh, starting with a pair of major patches designed to address uh, performance, gameplay bugs, and numerous patches. I'm going to fast-forward this article. Uh, Okay. (laughs) We'll just go right to their tweet. Cyberpunk tweeted, Cyberpunk is in stores on the PlayStation Store. You can play the game on PlayStation 4 Pro and PlayStation 5. <laughs> Notably leaving out the original PlayStation 4. Yeah. Additionally, a free next-gen update will be available for all owners of the PlayStation 4 version of Cyberpunk 2077 in the second half of 2021. Then there's an additional tweet to let you know. Users may continue to experience some performance issues with the PlayStation 4 edition while we continue to improve stability across all platforms. The PlayStation 4 Pro and PlayStation 5 versions of the game will provide the best experience on PlayStation. Um, should also note that um, Sony Interactive Entertainment also makes that same claim. Uh, it is best experience on a PS4 Pro or a PS5. I think it's interesting that Sony has kept it off of the store. Well, is it back on Xbox? It's it never left Xbox. Oh, I thought it did. No, never never left Xbox. It's always been on the Xbox store. It had it had like a an extended return policy though. Okay. And it had a it had a disclaimer saying this may run like shit on a base Xbox One. Okay. Interesting. Sony's weird. I don't know if they handled this well. <laughs> I mean, I'm mad at both companies for, for I'm mad at Microsoft and Sony for uh for even allowing this to be published on their stores at all. Mm-hmm. It seems like they thought there was gonna be backlash if they published these games. I, I'm sorry. It seems like there would have been backlash if they um didn't publish the games. So they published the games, waited for everybody to realize that it was bad, and then they, well, at least Sony, unpublished it. Um, it's just weird because the, in order to be on a PlayStation, in order to release a game on PlayStation or Xbox, you have to pass a certification. Exactly. So, yeah. So the game passed certification for both consoles, and were, were and were both launched, and yet. There was such a, a shit show of a media firestorm from everyone until eventually Sony just decided, all right, you know what? We'll take the game down until you can sort this out. Meanwhile, Microsoft, probably because Microsoft had a big like deal with CD Projekt, because like, they made a custom Xbox for it. They made a custom controller for it. 
you know, so they probably they couldn't back out. They had to put up a big disclaimer and issue a, an extended uh, warranty for it. That that's why it seems dirty to me. It, like like basically, Microsoft and Sony were both saying that uh, certification uh, means less to uh, AAA publishers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the stream seems to be working fine for me, but it, it it says that there's dropped frames. I don't know what the deal is with that. Uh, it looks... I'm, the Twitch seems to be working for me. So if there's a problem, yeah, just no refresh. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so that's why it seems weird to me that, that there's a certification process and they just seem to just fast track this thing through certification. Um, yeah. And then afterwards, we're like, oh, we probably shouldn't have published this. Yeah. Will is out of sync sometimes. I don't know what to tell you, dude. It's been like four, four or five weeks. Will's been out of sync. I don't know what you yeah. want me to do about it. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, uh, so I still would. I still wouldn't get Cyberpunk. I, I mean, I, I still hold hold my opinion that the game just, even if it ran good, is not that good. <laughs> I disagree. I think that there is a good game in there somewhere. It is just buried under a technical disaster. <laughs> right. So now that I have a, uh, an Xbox One X, I think I can play it. Okay. But I'm not going to go back to it anytime soon because I just feel so burnt by it. I'll see how I feel after I play Resident Evil 7. But, yeah. Let's talk about another big major gaming company disaster this is grand theft auto online not being a thing anymore is it is it a disaster it, it's a weird i'm calling it a disaster for for go, go ahead and and talk about it okay GTA Online for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 will shut down on December 16th 2021 this is from Rockstar Games themselves. As we continue to move forward with updates and support for PS4, Xbox One, and PC versions of Grand Theft Auto Online, as well as prepare for this fall's launches uh, of the new expanded enhanced versions of GTA 5 and GTA Online on PS5 and Xbox Series X and S, the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 versions of GTA Online, including website stat tracking via the Rockstar Games Social Club, will officially be shutting down on December 16th, 2021. In addition, cart, uh, Shark Cash cards for GTA Online will no longer be sold for PS3 or 360 versions after September 15th. Please note these changes are strictly for the PS3 and 360 versions of GTA Online and will have no impact on access to or progress within the GTA 5 story mode. Additionally, website stat wait, lost it. Additionally, website stat tracking via the Rockstar Games Social Club and other features for select PS3 and 360 titles will be shutting down on September 16th. These include website stat tracking, online multiplayer and leaderboards for the PS3 and 360 versions of Max Payne 3, and website stat tracking for PS3 and 360 versions of LA Noir. These all these changes will have no impact on access or progress in story mode for any of these titles on either platform. We'd like to thank the GTA Online community for their continued support and look forward to seeing players continue their journey in Los Santos with us on new platforms. So Man of Steel on the chat says, it's fine. It's like while eventually upgrading graphics and bot running on shitty PC and not running on shitty PC anymore. Uh, it's not like that. <laughs> and here's why. I'd like to say it's perfectly fine for them to, uh, you know, uh, get rid of the servers. Like, I'm sure not many people are playing on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 anymore. Like, it makes perfect sense for them to just to, to kill it eventually. Um, yeah. The problem I have with it is that um, uh, you cannot transfer your character at all. And you haven't been able to since 2017. Mm. So yeah. even if you, uh, even if they told you about this earlier, you would have had to have known about it prior to 2017 to be able to transfer your character at all. 
So people have been playing from 2017 up until now on their PlayStation 3s or Xbox 360s, and those guys are just fucked. There's <laughs> nothing they can do. That their character is is dying on that console now. So that is why this is stupid. Uh, they they I learned about this from a uh, friend of the show, frequent frequent viewer here, Kate McCat. She tweeted. Uh, so Rockstar tweeted online services for LA Noir, Max Payne 3 and GTA Online, which is the important one. I don't know why they put that at the end. GTA Online on yes. PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 will end on December uh, 16th. And then she said, so basically I have to get a new console before December. Otherwise I won't be able to keep playing one of my favorite games. But even if I do, my eight years worth of save progress is about to be killed because I have the audacity to skip a console generation. And then she says, fuck capitalism. <laughs> um, and then I noted this part of the article will i be able to transfer my progress from gta online on playstation 3 or xbox 360 to the current console generation no this is not possible there is no feature available to transfer character data or progress from those platforms people are def a lot of people after i tweeted this a lot of people defended rockstar mm -hmm. saying uh they had all of this time to transfer it which isn't true it they it, they got locked out of it in 2017 um uh, also people are saying that there were a lot of hackers on playstation 3 and xbox 360 and that's why they got rid of uh the ability to transfer your stuff so why is this the player's fault yeah <laughs> you're still punishing all of those people who spent all of this time on their character and are now just screwed yeah so uh i think this is very stupid and very anti-consumer and, and and I also tweeted, this was a mistake on my part. I said, it's a big reason I never got into GTA Online back in 2013, 2014. I wasn't about to pay another $60 and do all that shit all over again. You Back in 2013 or 14, uh, when they uh, released the next-gen version of the game, I had just finished yeah. GTA on the previous generation. And I was like, I'm not paying $60 for the game again. Uh, yeah. You could have, there was a system in place for you to transfer your character then. The system stopped in, they stopped letting you do it in 2017. Right. Um. So, uh, it, it, it's, it's, this whole, this whole thing is, is shitty on Rockstar's part for, for, for players who have been playing on old consoles from 2017 up until now. Yeah. Also, uh, Rockstar announced in September 2015 that PS3 and 360 versions of, of online will no longer receive any new additional content due to limitations in the console capacity. That makes sense. Oh, they haven't been supporting it since 2015 in general. Right. Uh, but at the same time, in 2015, there were a lot more people with PS3s and 360s than there were with PS4s and Xbox Ones. I, I so they were cutting out a lot of customers. I understand them cutting out, cutting them off from new content. I don't understand them not letting you transfer your progress. That feels like they should give a huge disclaimer when yeah. they're going to cut you off. Because again, they cut you off. They cut everybody off in 2017. From transferring from PlayStation yeah. 3 and Xbox 360. They should have said back then, hey, if you don't transfer right now, you'll never be able to do it. That seems it like, that like, seems like they, they, should, can... they really should have put a disclaimer on it for people. And, and it seems like something to implement again. You know? They, like, if, they ha if they could do it before, they can certainly do it again. Because 2017 was not that long ago. The, the the problem is the the the, the cheaters but like figure it right. out dude like you, you don't don't uh don't penalize the the normal uh you know good intentioned players don't, yeah. don't don't penalize your good intentioned customers from from the game that they love because you have some bad apples you know yeah um so yeah, I think this is a uh, this is uh, an example of Rockstar being pretty shitty. Yeah, I mean, I understand. I mean, online games have a lifespan. Like, it's inevitable that the 360 and PS3 versions were gonna 
you know, come to an end at some point. Right. But the fact that, you know, if they have all these other versions of the game available, that's basically the same game. And if you want to play it on a different system, you have to start from scratch. That's that sucks. Uh, Neji the Master says, I used to work customer support for Rockstar and you just need to contact support to transfer your character. Bro, if that's true and you can do that now, you should uh, either make a video doing it or make a Reddit post of you doing yeah. that. Because that would be a huge deal. If that's if that's literally all that you have to do is ma- is just call them. That would be a huge deal if, if you could transfer your character doing it that way. I, I'm honestly surprised that there isn't more outrage over something like this because it, it really does fuck a lot of people. Rockstar is one of those companies where like they can get away with murder. Yeah. Like any, it, they're one of those companies where like they, can, it doesn't matter what they release, like what state it's in, or, like how bad it is, they get a pass. Uh, uh, their CEO might have murdered somebody. <laughs> might have. <laughs> um, all right. Let's move through these next stories pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, Microsoft is bringing next-gen Xbox games to the Xbox One with cloud. This is the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, Microsoft yes. is doing something good and not getting any uh, yes. credit for it. Uh, of course, it's deciding now it doesn't want to load for me. Thank you, oh, okay. Peter. Thank you for never never doing what i fucking want you to do you should you should give give the old fonts yeah <laughs> microsoft will let xbox one owners play next gen xbox games through xcloud ser- through its xcloud service the news was buried in a blog post recapping microsoft's xbox and bethesda showcase with the company confirming plans to leverage xbox cloud gaming known as xcloud for xbox one consoles That means the 2013 hardware will be able to play Series X exclusive games from 2021, extending the life cycle of what would normally soon be obsolete boxes. For millions of players, for millions of people who play on Xbox One consoles today, we're looking forward to sharing more about how we will bring many of these next gen games, such as Microsoft Flight Simulator, to your console through Xbox Cloud Gaming. Uh, just like we do with mobile devices, tablet, tablets, and browsers, says Will Tuttle, editor-in-chief of Microsoft's Xbox Wire. Until now, Microsoft had only described xCloud on consoles as a way for players to try games before you download them, but it's clear the company seems to seize the service as offering much more. Microsoft originally announced Microsoft Flight Simulator as an Xbox One title before quietly removing references to the Xbox One launch in December. Microsoft recently confirmed Flight Simulator will now launch on Series X and X, X and S, fucking hate that name, on July 27th. Uh, it's not clear when xCloud gaming sh- game streaming will be available on Xbox One. Uh, it is unlikely to be ready in time for the July launch of Flight Simulator. And Microsoft's head of cloud gaming, Kareem Kodri, uh, previously said xCloud will be integrated into consoles later this year. xCloud availability will provide a welcome boost for Xbox One consoles, particularly as Microsoft is upgrading its, servers, its server blades to run Series X hardware later this month. It will give this older hardware a way to play upcoming titles like Starfields, which, like Flight Simulator, will also launch exclusively on the Series X and S. So, 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 uh, this, we, I guess this was heavily speculated because I always thought this was just a thing that was going to happen. But like, like we, was, always, we always knew that the next generation of Xbox was going to be, uh, you know, like they don't care where you play the game and all of the Xbox yeah. devices were going to kind of work in some way. They would always, it was always just assumed that Xbox One would be included in this. Microsoft never said anything officially because all like the, the, the promos and stuff and all the, the, the press releases for xCloud always uh, talked about PC and mobile and series x Mm -hmm. never really mentioned xbox one if it did it was more for like xbox one games not series x games this is the first time they're saying that series x games will be available on x cloud on xbox one right so how do i get an x cloud subscription isn't it part of game pass it's part of game pass okay so that's a weird way for them to talk about it then yeah they, they, sh- they should be saying xCloud as, or, or I'm sorry, X, 
Xbox Cloud Gaming as part of Game Pass. That's how it should be presented to us. Yeah. Because, because okay, cool. This is a cool idea. I have an Xbox One. I want to play Microsoft Flight Simulator. How do I play it? I got to get Xbox Cloud Gaming. Okay, let me just look up yeah. how much the subscription for Xbox Cloud Gaming is. And then you look it up, and then you get slapped with Game Pass. And you're like, what the hell is this? Yeah. Um, Cloud Gaming Beta with Xbox Game Pass. Okay, well, that makes it a little easier. Uh, yet another reason why uh, Game Pass is so cool. Yes. Um, I think this is a great way to extend the life cycle of the console you already have, um, especially if it works the way it's supposed to. Um, it's amazing to me that uh, Sony does not have anything like this <laughs> right now. They have PlayStation Now, but it's nowhere near as robust or as thought out as this, and PlayStation Now has been around for much longer. They don't have the technology. Uh, I, I think I think Microsoft... Uh, knew that this is what they could be good at and they're leveraging that well definitely but yeah. i mean yeah. sony bought I forgot the, i think they were called gaikai and they were a cloud gaming service they mm -hmm. bought them before the launch of the ps4 specifically for playstation now the playstation now has been around for a long time and in the, like the years that playstation now has been around it has no gotten nowhere near the amount of good press and goodwill that Game Pass has gotten. Well, I mean, you know, Amazon could go ahead and buy Google Stadia, and that wouldn't mean <laughs> dick. <laughs> I mean, that's that's different because Amazon and Amazon Luna and Google Stadia, those that, that's two tech companies trying to get into the gaming sphere. Right. And as we've seen, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to make games. They don't understand games. They just throw money at it to try and make it work whereas microsoft and sony have been in the game for a while so they well, know how well, this they know how this works microsoft is a game company that that uh also has a very robust 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 a very robust cloud <laughs> service yes so uh, i i think that they have a better shot at a service like this than sony ever could have However, well, I think Sony leveraging their uh, their uh, first party support and and stuff like that is is doing well for them currently. Also, too, that came out not too long ago that Sony is partnering with Microsoft to use their Azure technology mm -hmm. to power uh, PlayStation Now. If you can't beat them, join them. Exactly. But don't you dare play cross platform with them. Nope. I still have a lot of problems with PlayStation. What one yeah. being uh that uh hold on. One of my problems being that this freaking console is too goddamn big. It's freaking yeah. massive. Why is it I why is it this big? I, I cannot I can't even lift it. I'm not even gonna do it. Can I do this? I have nope. to wait for a slim version of that because there's no way that's going to fit in my setup it's at it's, all. It's right here. It's taking up so much room on my freaking desk. It's insane. Yeah. I have I was thinking about, you know, storing my consoles vertically now mm -hmm. to save more space, but even that would take up way too much room. I mean, I have like a shelf over here that I put it in, but uh, I was using mm -hmm. it for a video, so I put it on my desk uh, and I'm using it for another video. And uh, I'm also lazy and don't want to put it away. But it is, yeah. it is. Every morning I wake up and I roll over and I see this monstrosity towering over me, and it is terrifying. Yeah. Um. Anyway, is that it? No, we got. Oh, uh, yeah, that's it. Because we talked about yeah, Sonic that's it. Minecraft already. Wow. That we got. Look we, at that. We talked about everything. Uh. Except, yeah. Except for the one thing that you all come here for every week. That's right. Quit of the week, quit of the week, quit of the week. It's tweet of the week time, you stupid bitch. Yeah. This one's from our good friend Ant Dude. Metroid bed. And it's Met it's it's <laughs> Mr. Metroid himself in a bed. And then Mario look at him that's from Mario funny. RPG. Yeah. Uh and that's that. 
Wow, 37,000 likes on that. <laughs> Worth everyone. Uh, anyway, now we will talk to you guys. Yes! If you left a comment on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast, we will answer them right here, right now. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, watch us at home. Please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. I'm a little scared because uh, Fred, who pulls the questions from the YouTube comments for us, mm -hmm. he said, uh, is Will going to be on the show? And I said, yeah, why? And he said, because... Uh, um, there's some hockey stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I got a peek at uh, the questions beforehand, and I did notice a lot of hockey stuff. He's a hockey fan, so I'm a little scared yeah. about this. I had a dream, Will, that I went to go do the show today, uh -huh. and you just weren't here. <laughs> and I think that's why I was nervous when Fred asked if you were going to be on the show. Uh -huh. I was like, I had a dream that Will wasn't. <laughs> Is something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Gorgot said, since the Transformer movies are played out trash, okay, dude, do you guys well, think a new type of giant robot movie could step in? Maybe Gundam or Robotech? They, um, they keep saying that, oh, we're going to do a Gundam movie, we're going to do a Robotech movie, we're going to do a Voltron movie, but they never get made. I'll believe it when I see it. I think uh, they Pacific just, Rim was great. Yeah, that was about as close as we got. I never they saw the second just one, announce, They did just announce that Transformers 7 will be called Rise of the Beasts. Oh, no. And will be most likely be a Beast Wars oh, no. movie. And it will star in the Heights' is Anthony Ramos, who I've met. He's very nice. How have you met him? Uh, was in the city once. <laughs> just Just hanging out? Yeah, you know, he lives there. <laughs> I, I need more context for this <laughs> you can't you go you're not just hanging out in the city going hey you're that guy how's it going bro no, you know what was? My, wife and I went, my wife and i went to a movie that he was in okay and he was at he was at the screening of that movie that's weird and it was in the city yeah not a good movie but. <laughs> i saw the first eight minutes of that movie because it was put in the heights because it was put on uh on yeah. youtube uh w one of the characters says chillax unironically i'm not seeing that movie <laughs> uh next we got it Matthew. was yes because I, I was gonna say i saw the whole in the heights thing and it was not what i was expecting it was very hard to follow uh the movie was infectious though the music was infectious i must say i did watch like an hour of um that one everybody likes. <laughs> Hamilton? Yeah, I watched an hour yeah. of Hamilton. I think it was on Netflix or something. Couldn't do it. That's on I'm... Disney Plus. Okay, on Disney Plus. If I was yeah. there in person, I probably would have liked it more, to be honest. But uh... Yeah, Ham Hamilton is... like uh, In the Heights is Sonic 1, and <laughs> Hamilton is Sonic 2. Okay. That's the best I can describe it. Well, Just you what, you saw Hamilton. Hamilton in person, though, right? I did see Hamilton. Yeah. I'm sure it's a different experience if you're there. It it is, but honestly, the version that's on Disney Plus is pretty close. I just don't think I'm a musical guy, except Bo Burnham and that's funny. video, Bo Burnham special, amazing, great time. Eh, was it though? Hannah's making fun of me in the chat. Shut up, shut up, Hannah. <laughs> Movie, it's not that good. Can't do it. Um, yeah, shut up, Hannah. Uh. Anyway, Matt. Matthew Coughlin mm -hmm. uh, says, travel to New York City in a couple of months. First, for the first time ever, Brooklyn mostly. Oh, welcome. What your oh. top cough, coffee and bagel spots? Come over. <laughs> <laughs> top coffee spot right here. Um, uh, there's stump towns everywhere. That's good. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else? Variety is pretty uh, good. Uh, Hungry Ghost is pretty good. Um, honestly, I got really into coffee when the pandemic happened and a lot of places closed and I haven't been able to go to a lot of places since becoming a coffee snob. So I feel ill-equipped to recommend coffee places to you. Bagels? 
Might have to travel to Long Island. Got to be honest. Yeah, I was gonna say all the bagel places I know are on Long Island. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, there's a lot of great, shitty delis and and bodegas and stuff just all over the city. Um, mm -hmm. and everybody's gonna say they know the best one because they used to live by it or something. Um, but, uh. I mean, yeah, I'm from Long Island, so th those are those are the ones yeah. that I that I know the most and that I like the most. Yeah. Um. Sp Sprozek in the chat says Huck for coffee. Huck, I know of the beans. Like I have, I get Huck, um, from from uh, I get Huck from uh from trade. I am actually, I actually, just, I'm drinking it now. I, this is Huck, cold brew that I made. Um, there you go, and it's great. But I they don't have a storefront. I don't think do they? If they do, I need to go. Tim Simpson says stuff a bagel, no content, <laughs> and I <laughs> I might agree with him. But that's that, again that that's a good. bias because we grew up the era yes. of stuff a bagel. Yes. Um, also, uh, Bagel Boss is open twenty four hours. I got a problem uh, with Bagel go Boss. Store. Got a problem with Bagel Boss. They Why, got white. They're kosher? No, they got white and white cookies. <laughs> they got black and white cookies, and they got white and white cookies. Where are the black and black cookies, Will? Yeah, that got a problem. You yeah, know that it's a little, just... little sketchy over there. They're yeah, uh, questionable. <laughs> um. Uh, what do I want to say? Uh, oh, there's also Brooklyn Coffee Roasters. They're they're pretty good. Uh, they're they're all over the city too. Uh, I lost my spot. Um, we got Fred who says, Will, what happened to the Islanders last night? My guy. So what, Fred's including uh, his own comment. <laughs> the only thing I can say is I believe there's an expression uh, in Letterkenny, Ontario, where they say uh, that was fucking embarrassing. <laughs> I heard that they went 8-0. Uh, not the good kind. The bad yeah, kind. No, uh, the, the very bad kind. <laughs> and and all, pretty much... Most, if not all, of those eight uh, goals from the Lightning were in the first two periods. And there are only three periods in hockey. Wow. So, they're not, they're, we're not done. They have still, you know, they have one more game to lose. And if they win, then they have one more game to hopefully wrap this up and go on to the Stanley Cup finals. Um, it's not looking good. I, des I did design, I, I almost sent Bob uh, for the, xbox series controller design lab uh an islanders themed one but at the rate they're going i ain't fucking getting an islanders controller because i just look at it and be mad the whole time i have a friend who built an islanders themed drum set that's not true i helped him build it i forgot <laughs> i was part of that uh uh it's pretty ugly will gotta say islanders colors not well, the best <laughs> well blue and orange and like sometimes they throw a teal in there it's not cool oh, it's not so good he's going He's specifically going for like the the mid '90s Fisherman Islanders. I also don't think the the blue and orange that they use the Mets do the same. I don't think they're they're good colors. This is they're, com know, they're complimentary not... colors, but yeah, the type of like royal blue and and just straight up pure orange is kind of a little gross. I mean, it's worked so far i mean the knicks also use it so that's that's three teams you got to go and complain to uh i lost my spot again damn it um T tim asks, please help me tell me it wasn't grambo you helped build that kit for it was not but it was probably just as bad uh <laughs> <laughs> may the goo be with you oh boy says alternate alternative title will and bob shit on everything that is the podcast welcome yeah if you've never yeah, been here thank before, you for joining us we got a lot of problems with a lot of things yeah very few things please us anymore uh keyholes says so i kind of missed the early metroid game so to me there's no nostalgia or hype about the new dread game does it look good without any of that i've only ever uh beaten fusion Every other Metroid game I've played, uh, I've spent very little time with, uh, with the exception of Prime, the first one, and I yeah. didn't get through too much of Prime, to be honest. 
Yeah, the only the only two Metroid games I've ever spent a significant amount of time with are Prime and Fusion. I almost beat Prime, but that final boss gets way too hard. Um, I played I played a little bit of Super Metroid here and there. Uh, I played I played a big chunk of Metroid Prime Three at my friend's house one time. Uh, so I, I'm not like the most well versed in the Metroid universe, but that said, um, I do think Dread does look really cool, and I. I like the idea behind it, and I like yeah, you know, I like that style of game to begin with, and having one of the originators of that design, the Metroidvania style, have it come with like this new unique concept, I think is really interesting. Um, I, so. I I like a lot about the idea of Metroid, uh, or, or or I'm sorry, let me start that over. I like a lot about the pitch for metroid dread i like that yeah. it is a 2d side scroller or you know it's a 3d side scroller. i like that it's a side scroller i like <laughs> that they're uh they're shooting kind of like mega man i like those types of games i like i like the shooting platformers um uh what else i, I like that it's a canceled game from many years ago that they're re yeah. that they're bringing back i like that it's the fifth game in in uh in an old franchise like that uh yeah i like that it's a nintendo first party title that is a 2d side scroller or i'm sorry 3d <laughs> side scroller um that being said uh i am not well versed in metroid either so i'm i'm playing through samus returns i i i'm enjoying it so far i think it needs some work um i remember loving fusion uh i might go back and dabble in it a little bit just to make sure i wasn't you know full of shit when i played it um but i think that there's a lot of great potential for metroid dread and i hope that it sells a lot because then we'll get more metroid yeah that's the thing metroids have never been like big sellers even like at their peak and i so. hope they do a good job with some uh with with some uh what do you call it with 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 some uh uh user experience like design because like uh oh yeah there's certain things, there's certain like little things that I think are weird with uh, at least Samus Returns. But again, that's a Game Boy game <laughs> that they that they freaking uh, repackaged yeah. for for the 3DS. Um. Anyway, last one. Brenda Brenda says, as a Bruins fan, I'm not feeling Will's energy. Banned. Sorry, <laughs> you're not allowed to be a fan of any team that uh, Will doesn't like. Sorry. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Um uh, now we're in the chat for a hot minute. Pika Pika. Yes. Will, what is the best Spider-Man TV show? Japanese uh, one. Spe next question. Spectacular Spider Man. <laughs> What'd you say? Spectacular? Yeah. That's the one with uh the guy. Yes. You know? <laughs> the guy. I didn't like that one. Couldn't that get one into was it. good. That one was very good. I tried, I couldn't get into it. But try harder. Chris BX, hey guys, happy Tuesday. Did the stream crash at all tonight? Please tell me it didn't. Chris BX has been making the timestamps for uh, Wolf Den Live. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, there are timestamps now, and it's all Chris BX's fault, so blame him. Uh, it did not. However, we did drop frames a lot for, for a while, but I don't think that's going to affect the timestamps. Um, Suki... Gouda says, uh, Su Su Suki, no, Su I'm going to get this, Will. <laughs> Sui Kaguda, did Will ever have long and Bob's short hair? What? Did, okay, did Will ever have long hair? Yes. Did Bob ever have short yes. hair? Yes. Yes. If you go back and watch some of the early, early videos in this channel, like I, I had long hair. I had just like Bob. Uh, the difference is I started going bald and I decided rather than try to fight it, I will accept my fate and just start cutting it short because I would rather it look like Steve Austin than Hulk Hogan. Damn. Um, yeah. yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm holding off for dear life. Um, and, uh, I had short, the last time I had short hair was 2009 or eight. Um, I had like a crew cut for some stupid reason. I don't remember why. Yeah. Um, and then before that, the last time I had short hair was, like freaking middle school yeah uh it was the only way i could rebel <laughs> yeah <laughs> um anyway uh 
What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Edward Bova says the Castlevania Advanced Collection was just rated in Australia. Does that mean we're getting a compilation of the Castlevania Game Boy Advance games? I thought that was confirmed. Um, and if so, do you think that the, you'll be worth thirty dollars? Oh, or do you think they they should add the PS One? I think that'd be worth a lot of money. Yeah, those are great uh, games. The, the Castlevania Adva Game Boy Advance games are the best Castlevania games by a wide margin um i think if it would be a better value if they also added the ds games to it because mm -hmm. i think there's only like two or three and those are of equal quality because they're all made by igarashi um i think 30 dollars is fair for for three game boy advance games because those are long challenging games so i think you get your money's worth with that i only ever played one of them Circle of the Moon. That's the yes. first one. And I liked it a lot. Yeah. It's that's just, the only Castlevania game I've ever played, like, a decent chunk of. And that was more RPG than, like, we're used to. So, and, like, we played a lot of it back in the day. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was really uh, good. I believe it was I, a I, launch title for the Game Boy Advance. It was. It was. Um, I believe Aria of Sorrow, which is the third one in the series... Like people say, that's the best Castlevania game, like period. So if this comes out, I would be more than happy to, you know, actually play that. The others are Metroidvania, Bob. What is? I mean, it, it literally half of that word is Castlevania. So like, yeah, yeah, of course, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I was getting questions the other day. Do I like Metroidvanias or roguelikes? And I don't really like either, but uh, <laughs> if, I mean, if the mechanics are good enough, I'll suffer through anything, you know? Yeah. Uh, Man of Steel with five bits says, my Canadians are taking your Islanders uh, even if they make it to the next round. Lol. I guess he's banned too. Yeah. No, he ain't banned. I ain't afraid of Canada. <laughs> I ain't afraid of Canadians. Your bacon's weird. Yeah. Uh, the letter Kenny is great. DPR said it with three months says I played Circle of the Moon under a lamp because there was no damn backlight. True. Yeah, I remember like when Circle of the Moon came out, like it had great graphics for uh, the GBA, but everyone complained, "Oh, it's too dark, you can't see anything." Like, what do you expect? It's a Game Boy Advance. I think. Then the the SP came out, and everybody realized that was a stupid thing to say. <laughs> I think the Game Boy Advance had some of the best art direction in all of their games yeah. because uh it was pixel graphic well it was 32 bit right right yeah it was 32 bit it was when everybody was trying to experiment with 3d and and most were failing <laughs> and uh it was people who had already perfected 2d graphics uh, having a little bit more power to go with, and uh, they yeah. were nailing like there were so many great looking uh, Game Boy Advance games like Mega Man Zero, uh, the Sonic Advance games, um, mm -hmm. Castlevania, uh, even Pokemon had some great uh, yeah. art direction at, at that time. Uh, Open Serious Fox say, How do Canadians say Mario? Uh, like Terrence and Philip, yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Kiki Smee says free uh, healthcare, spooky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Wild Fia. Will, don't worry. The Habs need to get past the Knights first. That might just not happen. Hopefully, fuck the Habs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else do we got here? Yeah, if it's the Islanders and the Golden Knights in the Stanley Cup Finals, like, I think me and Dad might get into an actual fist fight. <laughs> Wait, is that a possibility? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, that's an excuse to go to Vegas. Yeah. Is it? Do they do the state? Do they have like a neutral territory for the Stanley Cup or no? No, they go to back and forth between the each player's arena. Oh boy. Each team's arena, yeah. Uh, Neji the Master uh, who comes back with another note about Grand Theft Auto Online. Who he uh, claims he worked at Rockstar 
uh, back in the day. Uh, I just want to add this was in regard to problem cases such as having a copy of the 360 box talking about the character transfer. Oh, if someone contacted us with a screenshot showing the back of the box, we would transfer the character for them. Again, this is old insider info as I no longer work there. Uh, so he's saying that was like a like a false advertising like fix. <laughs> yeah. Because I guess they, it, on the box it said you could transfer the stuff, but then if you really couldn't transfer it, they kind of had to do something about that. Uh, I wonder if they would still honor that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Boston says, I have a Game Boy Advance SP, but I lost the charger and can't find one anywhere, and I want to cry. Amazon! Yeah, I actually, you can get I have Game, Boy Advan Game Boy SP USB cables. So you can just plug them into like your iPhone charger. I got one. And it works fine. I, I have one, yeah. Yeah, uh, get those. And they're cheap. Um... Circa says, GBA is the best handheld console by far, in my opinion. Wish they'd port more games from the era to either Switch or at least mobile. Um, yeah, I would, the I GBA need, had like a great roster of games. I need a good uh, modded Game Boy Advance. I might have to suck yeah. it up and one day do one of these. Um, what the hell's it called? The company that oh Boxy Pixel, the company that made the uh, oh the the aluminum Joy Cons that I have, yes. Oh my god, they have a Game Boy Color. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, you can buy oh, you can get an aluminum the... shelf for the Game Boy Color. Have That's you ever seen wild. Metal Jesus's Game Boy Advance? No. Is it? He has is like it, a. Is it this the unhinged Game Boy Advance? No, no. It's it's a it's a regular Game Boy Advance, but it's like got a USB-C port in it and it's got like flash memory and whatnot. It's it's from retro modding. That's who made it. Oh, we it's know. It's really, really nice. Retro yeah. modding is how uh uh Greg, what's his what's his company? They made my Game Boy. Uh, why am I drawing a blank? Game Changer Mods. Retro oh, yes. modding is where Game Changer Mod gets all their stuff. Yes. So, so this Game Boy is is a is a retro modding print. Yeah, um, it's got a backlit display, a rechargeable battery with USB C, um, a better speaker, so, so, uh, an adjustable so clock speed. Retro modding makes all of the, or or they source all of the parts. They're a storefront where you can get yeah. all of the parts. You still have to build it yourself. And the same thing with this Game Boy Advance SP unhinged. Uh, this is yeah. just, you still have to build, you can get them to build it, I think, but it is like an insane amount of money and not worth it. Yeah, that's always the problem. It's like an ungodly amount of money. Um, yeah, this would be cool to have though. Yeah. I mean, they've been doing some great stuff with the uh, Game Boy Advanced mods now. I think they just like recently, uh, people started using a new sort of IPS display that is like really cool. Yeah. Um, and I have I have a a Game Boy Advance uh the you know the original the the flat one I have yeah an extra one just laying around that needs some work so there you I go. could cannibalize it. Um, I used to do Game Boy Advance modding back in the day. Will you know about that, right? <laughs> yeah, you you cut open our Game Boy Advance and you uh, hot glued a USB thumb drive into it, and and I tried <laughs> to put a pocket knife into it. Did you? I did because there's all this room I in the back of it. That. I was like, we, I could put a pocket knife in this thing, and uh, I destroyed that Game Boy. So. You did, you did. Um. Anyway, I think we're done here. Well, okay, guys, thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put up an archive version of it over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go and watch it on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh, me exterior 
on Twitter just tweeted Knuckles OVA hat confirmed for Minecraft and it's it's like I guess the hub area you got Knuckles yeah. standing in a corner with his hat from the original video <laughs> animation that is great and then, oh uh, that is another screenshot of like the hub area with all these like little cool details like the green yeah. zone like a uh, like picture and Sonic and Amy and stuff pretty cool i have to check that out uh we're yeah. dropping frames like crazy this is the end of the show thanks okay. for being here everybody uh i guess i should raid somebody uh just say hi to the raid whoever i raid if you're even still watching this uh goodbye <laughs> bye <laughs>